Okay, so before I showed you, okay, we went in one direction. The elevation was unestablished or unverified. The 207.93 was not verified properly. So what you have to do is actually go backwards now. And this is what constitutes being an actual loop. Start at a known elevation, establish elevations on your way through, and then end back on that same known elevation. If you end at the same elevation, then what you did in the middle, we would assume that all your work in the middle is really good. Okay, so to do that, we're going to go through the same process. We now go backwards. We use uh, back sites, four sites, go all the way through. So I'll just tell you what all this information is here. We end up now, after doing all that, we end up at 205.15. Now, did we end up at our same elevation? No, we didn't. We came and now calculated this to be 205.15, but remember, this is your benchmark. That's what we should have ended up at. This is now calculated based upon the loop. And now we know that something is wrong. So what we end up with, well, let's double check our math again. So we ended up at minus 0 0.08. So if you take the 205.15 minus what we started, again, 0 0.08. So we, we ended up fine. Now what we're going to talk about is we have a misclosure here. Erase this here. What that misclosure is meaning that we didn't end at the exact same elevation. That's all it's saying. So as we take our, uh, our ending elevation, we subtract our initial elevation, we end up at minus 0 0.08. Okay, this misclosure, as we talk, we're only allowed to misclose by a certain amount. Um, and certain levels of, of leveling is going to be used to be able to get through this. So for, for our projects in class, this is how we're going to deal with it. Um, like when we do lab. So C stands for allowable misclosure. This is a constant, the point zero two feet. So this is if we're doing our misclosure in feet. And then N is the number of setups. The number of setups is every time that you have a, uh, you set your instrument up and you have a back sight. And then you have a foresight. Okay, that constitutes a setup. So every time you set your instrument up. All right, if we're going to do it in meters or in metric uh, uh, metric units, the mis allowable misclosure, we're going to be calculating that in millimeters, is going to be equal to 2.8 millimeters times the square root of n. So 2.8 is a constant, n is the number of setups. But this is, is allowing us to say, all right, in citing back and you making some sort of any errors that fall within there, we're going to allow 2.8 millimeters times the square root of each setup to allow us to tell us, okay, about what you're going to be dealing with and what error we're going to allow in these certain projects. Now, the Federal Geodetic Control Subcommittee came up with a different way to, uh, to do this. We did ours based upon the number of setups. This way uh, bases everything based on distance. Uh, so C, again, is your allowable misclosure in millimeters. Now, the, the standards that are set forth here are in metric units. Uh, so just, just keep in mind. Uh, our constants, we have 4, 5, 6, 8, and 12 millimeter, uh, millimeter constants. And then uh, K is our total perimeter, or the length of our loop, and that is done in kilometers. So based upon this, based upon what M is, our constant, we have certain classes and certain orders of survey. If you want to be very, very specific and very, very accurate and precise, you want to do first order class 1, which means that uh, here, out of everything, that constant that we're going to be using can only be between 0 and 4 millimeters. Um, or in the end, if you go through and close and you calculate your closure and you want to find out how well you closed, you're going to find out what order, what class you really are in. So these are the, uh, these are the constants you're going to follow to be able to tell us exactly what order we're in. First order, class 1, first order, class 2, so on and so forth, till you hit third order. Third order is not very good. Uh, and you'll find. Uh, you'll, in, in lab, you'll find maybe you're going to be closer to second order class one or second order class two, which is fine and understandable for, uh, for that kind of work. This is for, you know, when you get to this, this is, high, this is very precise leveling. Uh, so you, you go through different uh, procedures and different equipment to be able to get to this sort of accuracy. Regardless, though, this is what the uh, uh, FGCS has come up with that we use to establish, okay, what our allowable misclosure is.
and what we can do and how to be able to fix it. So if you don't uh, meet the misclosure uh, that's required, then you run the loop again. And if you don't meet it again, you run it again. You keep running it until you get it right. All right, so as we talked about what the misclosure is and what it represents, what we're going to say is we need to adjust it now. We need to, uh, we definitely need to adjust this. So what we're saying is we're going to take that 800 of a foot and we need to take that 800 of a foot and put it back in there and adjust all the elevations so that it's going to come out proper. So what we're going to do is, is every height of instrument is going to be adjusted by the hundredth of a foot. Each one gets a hundredth of a foot. So if we correct this first one uh, and raise that up by a hundredth of a foot, and remember, if you look right here, is my my adjustment. We misclosed by a minus, so we have to go the opposite direction and go uh, positive eight hundredths to be able to make everything close out right. Now remember, you can't just go to the end right here, raise this by eight hundredths of a foot, and call it good. You've got to go through the whole loop and be able to make that adjustment. So first I take the uh, the first height of instrument, adjust it, and I get the 209.66. Now subtract off your 3.61, you get a new elevation. So there's your first adjusted elevation. Now you're going to see, I told you every height of instrument is going to get a hundredth of a foot. And now why why am I going to be adjusting it by, uh, by two hundredths of a foot? Well, you've got to remember that the errors are accumulative. Okay, so if the first height of instrument got a got a hundredth of a foot, you get a new elevation. That new elevation plus your backside will give you an elevation uh, of the instrument. Now you add the hundredth to that, which then gives you a new elevation. Or instead of going through that long process, it's uh, your first height of instrument gets one amount of the air, second gets two times it, third gets three times it, four, so on and so forth, which then allows you to again calculate new elevations. Okay, so then I'll show you here. So here's what I'm talking about, that each, ele each elevation of the instrument gets a third part, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth part as you get to it. So we make all those adjustments. Subtract off the four sites, and you get all new elevations. Now you can see here, based on that, uh, that, uh, that adjustment, now we did adjust that by the 800s, but also in the mean, in the middle, we adjusted all the rest of these. So you make that adjustment. Now we have a good loop. Now we know that uh, everything inside there is really good.